Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we are going to take a look on this very clever face detector that HP created for this distortion analyzer here. And in the end of the video, we are going to LT Spice to see the circuit working with a simulation. In this equipment, the phase detectors, there's one here and other here, are used to automatically tune the wind bridge used to filter the fundamental signal to measure total harmonic distortion. And if you remember, in the last video, we studied the impedance converter. That is this very important block here that buffers the input signal for all the other blocks that follow. And here we can see the wind bridge. We have the reactive lag here and here the resistive lag. And the idea here is that using this bridge configuration, if we apply the input signal here in the common node of the bridge and we measure the differential voltage here across the bridge, we get gonna have a perfect null at the fundamental frequency so we can null the fundamental frequency canceling all the voltage all the signal present on the fundamental so only the harmonics of the input signal will follow to amplification where we can have a very high gain to measure the amplitude of the harmonics in relation to the fundamental and this notch filtering technique is of course needed because we need to have dynamic range on the equipment the fundamental is a very large signal the harmonics are very low and it would be almost impossible to amplify all the signals having sufficient dynamic range. So we filter, we first filter the fundamental and after we can amplify only the harmonics to make the measurement. And why the phase detectors are needed in this design? HP found a very clever way to automatically tune the center frequency of the notch filtering of this wing bridge here. So here they use this phase detector here to tune the reactive lag of the bridge and this phase detector here to tune the resistive lag of the bridge. And this is only possible because the error signals generated by the reactive side and the resistive side are in quadrature. And this is the beauty of this design here. The input signal comes here and here we use two amplifiers, amplifier one and an amplifier two, having the bridge in the middle of the two amplifiers and using negative feedback to enhance the notch filtering to reduce the bandwidth making the filter a higher quality filter. We can study in other videos how the negative feedback will affect and why the negative feedback will enhance the, the filtering. So the filter signal goes and what is interesting guys is that if we look to the signal here on the output and if the bridge is not perfect in tune with the input signal, the incoming fundamental here, if the signal here at the output is generated because the reactive lag, the reactive part here is not perfectly tuned to the frequency of the fundamental, we're gonna see here on the output an error in quadrature with the input. So the error here will have nine degrees of phase in relation to the input signal here. Here we have input, here we have output. But if the error is an unbalance in amplitude generated by a non-perfect resistive divider here, because remember the wind bridge in the perfect case will generate here in this node a one third of the amplitude of the incoming signal here. But of course, this will change a little bit in the real world and we need to adjust the resistive divider. It will not work properly if we place a two third and a one third resistor here because in the real world this reactive lag here will not generate a perfect one third of the main excitation voltage so we have to be able to change a little bit the divider ratio here to accommodate these imbalances on the reactive side and what is very interesting guys the error generated by the resistive part not being exactly matched to the ratio of the reactive part is in phase with the input so we have two errors error one error from the reactive part is nine degrees apart in relation to the input and error from this part here from the divider error two error two on the output is zero degrees in relation to the input so as the errors are in quadrature this is very beautiful we can use two phase detectors that can run in parallel 
to tune the reactive side and also the resistive side in the same time to tune the Wayne bridge to generate a perfect notch in the fundamental frequency. And for this to work, of course, the phase detector that is measuring the 9 degree lag error needs to have a 9 degree phase lag on the reference from the input signal here. Of course, we are lagging the input of the phase detector, so it is able to correct the 9 degree error generated by the reactive side. And to tune the bridge, we can see that HP used incandescent bulbs here, incandescent lamps, and they shine over LDRs here, here and here to change this resistance here, this resistance here and also this resistance here using the error signal from the phase detectors. So the phase detector generates an error signal that drives the lamp. The lamp excites the light sensible resistor here, the LDR, and this closes the loop to make the measurement. Unbelievable. So let's go and understand how this works. Here you have the circuit diagrams. I also draw it here on LT Spice. We can take a look after in the behavior looking here on LT Spice. And what happens here is very interesting. Here we have the signal after the Wayne bridge. So what we have here, guys, is a signal that's very small in amplitude. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to draw a signal here very small in amplitude. Let's think that the notch filtering is already close to the main frequency of operation. So it is already filtering a lot of the fundamental and we have a little bit of the harmonics here, but we need to tune a little more the Wayne bridge. So this is the output from the Wayne bridge and this signal is amplified by a buffer amplifier. So here we have the signal a little higher with a little of gain. This transistor acts as a buffer and also as an amplifier and this signal excites a differential amplifier. The reference of this differential amplifier is ground here. So only what matters is the input to this side here of the differential pair. Signal here arrives small, signal here is amplified a little bit, okay? And here we have a lot of gain because the emitters are coupled through this capacitor here. So the only degeneration we have here is the emitter resistance through this path here to this capacitor to ground. So gain of this stage is very high. And here we have even more amplification of the signal that's coming from the output of the Wayne bridge. So from this cascade of stages we have gain, but what is more important is that the differential pair here is generating two balanced outputs, two outputs that are out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase. Let's draw with sinusoidal signals here to make it easy to understand. Here the signal is very small and it, and it is inverted. Here the signal is inverted again and is higher, but we have two outputs where each other is out of phase. And this is very important because these two signals that will follow to the phase detector here. So the phase detector is actually only this block here, only using only one transistor, because this is a very clever design. The differential pair here is needed to generate the gain and to generate the two out of phase signals, but the phase detection is created only in this little block here. Very, very nice. So let's understand this part here, guys. Remember that here you have a signal in this fashion and here you have a signal in this fashion here. They, they are perfectly out of phase and they are able to cancel each other. This is important to note. Let's think now, guys, that this transistor here is in the off state. We see that if the transistor is not here, we have a direct connection of the two signals coming from the differential pair and we can see that they meet here on this node. The signal is first AC coupled through this capacitor, through this 10K resistor and goes through this node here. And here on the other side, the signal is AC coupled, goes through the 10K resistor and meet the other signal here on this node. In this node here, guys, we have zero volts. The transistor is not conducting. All the signal from this leg arrives at this node. All the signal from this leg arrive at this node and they cancel each other because they are perfect out of phase. This node here is adding the two signals that are perfect out of phase. The outcome here is a zero volt, is a virtual ground. Look at these guys. We generated a virtual ground, a zero volt potential, because we are summing together, we are adding together two out of phase signals. So one of the states of the transistor is off, and in this case, we have zero here going 
out. When the transistor is off, we have zero volts. But now what happens if the transistor is conducting? Very, very interesting. If we apply a signal here on the base of the transistor, the transistor will conduct and this node here will be tied to ground. So look at this. This signal here will be grounded. So forget about this signal here because it is directly grounded by the transistor and this resistor here is also grounded. So now this resistor pair here creates a voltage divider. Look at this. The signal will pass through this resistor. We will arrive at the node here at the main output node, but we have now a resistor that goes to ground. So we see clearly that this signal here will be at the output, but divided by two. When the transistor is on the on state, signal, this signal here goes out. Hmm. So here we can have zero volts or a sample of the signal coming from differential amplifier. So look what HP did here, guys. They created a shopper circuit using only one transistor. This could be done using a switch and a switch to ground, a common shopper. Signal goes here. You can close this switch to create zero volts, or you can close this switch here to have this signal at the output. But they created this behavior using only one transistor very very beautiful because they are generating the virtual zero volts using the canceling effect of the two out of phase signals when the transistor is not on the circuit very very interesting how this is detecting the phase ah now is the beautiful part the signal that is being applied here to the transistor guys is a clipped version of the input signal so before the wing bridge so here we're gonna have a square wave signal going here will be a square wave that is actually the input signal of the equipment amplified a lot so this signal here is in phase with the input of the equipment and this circuit here is chopping the output of the wing bridge so we are detecting the phase mixing down this signal here to dc this is actually a mixer. We are mixing the output for, from the Wayne bridge with the same frequency in phase with the input. So now the output here is a DC level that is proportional to the phase difference between the input of the instrument and the output of the Wayne bridge. Look at these diagrams, guys. Very nice. You can see exactly how it works. This is the signal that's been applied to the transistor chopper, okay, that is sampling the error signal sampling mixing down converting all this stuff is is the same in the end is the same stuff we are down converting on the frequency domain we are sampling on the time domain doesn't matter in the output we're gonna have a dc level that's proportional to the phase difference between the chopping signal that is the reference and the error signal coming out from the wing bridge if the reference signal and the error signal is aligned in this way here we are sampling we are chopping only the negative half of the wave of the error signal so we are generating a negative dc level on the output of the phase comparator if the error signal is in opposite phase we're gonna chop only the positive half so now we are generating a positive DC level on the output of the phase detector. Very, very nice. If they are exactly nine degrees apart, look at this. We are gonna sample half positive and half negative. And this will generate zero volts on the output of the phase detector. So using this differential arrangement, HP created a chopper circuit using only one transistor and using the chopped DC level in the output of the phase detector, they can excite a lamp driver that will amplify the signal even more and also amplify buffer the signal in the current domain to have current to excite the bulb, the lamp, and the light emission from the lamp will generate a variation in resistance in the light dependent resistors and this will change the behavior of the Wayne bridge to tune the bridge, to turn the notch filter exactly over the fundamental frequency. This is HP design, guys. Very, very beautiful. Here we have a simulation, guys. I'm using two sources here to generate the out-of-phase signals from the differential pair. 
and you can see that I set it here the output resistance of the voltage sources as the collector resistances, this collector resistance and this collector resistance here from the differential pair. The signals are coupled to two capacitors to the voltage divider here and here we have a resistance to generate a, a reference signal here on the out and also a capacitor here to filter a little the DC level. You can see the square wave at the same frequency of the error signal generated by the differential pair here over but I have nine degrees of difference in phase. So you can see the chopping action. We are chopping exactly as predicted on the HP manual. Very, very beautiful. And if we change the phase here, let's chop another part of the signal, 30 degrees of difference. We can see that now the DC level is different. And to see the DC level, we of course gonna use a higher capacitor here. Now we have only the DC level. You can see these bumps here, but look at the scale. The scale is very small here. And we can see the difference, guys. Look at this. We can iterate over different phases. Let me change here the modulation. Modulation, no, the parameter. <laughs> and now we are simulating for different phases. And we see here that for each, and here we can see that for each different relation of phases between the error signal and the reference signal, we have different output DC levels that are filtered here by the capacitor. And what's more interesting, even more interesting about this design, guys, is that the biggest filter here are actually the low pass response of the lamps and of the LDRs. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and remember that you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link on the description. I see you in the next video of Electronics.